today we're going to visit with Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams and we're going to talk about the spring turkey season and the fire danger. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Jeb, the spring turkey season opens April 10th and we want to remind hunters how dry it is. Yeah, great, great topic, good conversation, Mike. There's no doubt that, you know, we're kind of stating the obvious as far as the dry conditions out in the state. And uh, we, we want to put out some information out there that's going to be beneficial to hunters while they're out recreating, which we want them to do and have a good time. But they also are going to have a responsibility to, to follow some rules and regulations to ensure um, that they're being as safe as they possibly can be while recreating. And there's a lot of resources out there to find out the fire danger index and we recommend that hunters go to that website. Absolutely. So if, if there's one thing that people can take away from this discussion, it's ndresponse.gov. That's a, a really good web page that takes, takes people to, a, to the site to give all the information regarding the daily fire index and all the county's uh, bans that they've put in place, burn bans, different, uh, different rules and regulations regarding the dry conditions, which, which give some additional restrictions to people that are out there recreating. Yeah, just a little bit of common sense could prevent a lot of these fires from happening. Well, for sure, and you know, the, the good thing is, is you know, uh, hunters in general have a good track record in North Dakota of you know, not being the cause of, of fires, of wildfires, but we wanna keep it that way. And one way to do that is to make people aware of, uh, of conditions and you know, to have that education that they need to be able to be you know, best prepared when they can when they're, when they're recreating in the outdoors. Jeb, do you recommend anything for hunters to keep in their vehicles that would help if an accidental fire would happen. Yeah, and so I, that's a great discussion as well, Mike. I mean, obviously being, you know, being educated and aware of the of the conditions like we just talked about, you know, with the ndresponse.gov web, website, but then also, you know, being being prepared on the spot if you would happen to come across or would accidentally start a small fire, what you could potentially do. Now, one of the things we do talk about a lot is a, you know, is some hand tools that a person can have. Now, a fire flapper is is probably the best tool out there, a hand tool that you can have, but we recognize that not everybody probably has one of those, you know, in their garage they can just throw in the back of the pickup. But, you know, just a, you know, a shovel, a spade shovel, a, you know, a metal yard rake. Um, lots of extra water. You know, we know people when they're out recreating, they're gonna have water. Take some extra water around. You know, I, one of the common things that people do probably have around their house or, you know, maybe in their boat that they could take out quickly is a fire extinguisher. Certainly wouldn't be something that uh, would hurt having, having along with some of those other tools. Um, you know, those are some things that can help, you know, with the smaller type situations that we hope you, people don't come across, but if you do, that they're prepared for that. And the th the, the, probably the most important thing nowadays, and, mo and most everybody has one, is a cell phone. Um, if you get into a situation where obviously you're, you, you've came, came across a bigger fire, you know, the small things that you probably have with you aren't probably gonna be enough. And so you need to call that in. And so what's important about that is sometimes when people see smoke, they maybe think somebody else has already called that in. Don't assume that that is the case. Um, if people have cell phones, um, and that's been a very good thing for, you know, for fires, for example, for reporting different incidents out there. And so make sure that people are aware about that. And if they do see smoke, they do see an incident, please call that in. Jeb, extremely dry. We've had some pretty big fires, especially out west. We have, and so it's not uncommon, Mike, for us to be dry in North Dakota in the spring and the fall, those types of things. So we. Again, that concern is, it's, it's not uncommon for the concern to be there. However, one of the things that's different this year is we have had, there have been some fires and some pretty sizable fires, especially in the western part of the state, but, but really scattered out throughout the state. And so there's some real life examples out there of people that are very concerned about additional activity going on in the rural areas. And so they're right to be concerned about that. How, how could you not be when your livelihood is based on grass in a lot of these conditions and there are some examples going on out there where that grass uh, can be gone very quickly. And so 
It, we've had a lot of conversations this week with people wanting to visit about this, wanting to visit about turkey season and, and the additional activity that's going to be going on in, in rural areas in North Dakota. And so we think it's, we hope this will be helpful of getting some additional information out to people about not only what people can do to be prepared, but just to be very understanding of the sensitivity and the concern out there from the, from the, the, the rural landscape in North Dakota as far as what kind of an impact that can have on somebody's livelihood. Jeb, I just read this morning, 70% of North Dakota is in the extreme category, the extreme drought category. What's that entail? So that's where, when we talked earlier, Mike, about the daily fire index and about depending on what level it's at for the particular day, there are some restrictions that are in place the higher that gets. And so, for, for example, obviously any open burning is not allowed, whether it's, you know, a campfire, you know, those different types of things. Also, that's covered with the county burn bans as well, where most counties do have a total burn ban in place. But more specifically on the, you know, the restrictions, like say smoking, for example, that's restricted to a vehicle or to a house, those types of things. And I, you know, and I, again, it's just another good reminder out there. I mean, I think a lot of people comment about cigarette butts flying out windows and you know it's that's critical right now that 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 doesn't happen and so those are some examples of certain situations where there are quite a bit higher restrictions that are in place based on the higher the uh, the fire index gets and you know spring turkey hunters some will be camping out west camping that means no campfires correct and that that is something that you know we know people enjoy uh, when they're out camping and and, and hunting but um, yeah, with burn, current burn bans in place and the daily fire index readings, that's, that's not, not allowed. Okay, the U.S. Forest Service has put some restrictions on the national grassland. How does that affect hunters? So obviously they're, they're concerned about additional fires too, and so they did put some additional restrictions in place. However, there is an exemption for people that are legally licensed hunters, uh, you know, that are hunting game or non-game. and so. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, that people, you know, still have, you know, wide open access to, to forest per service property. There is some restrictions in place as far as off-road travel goes, uh, you know, based on both county restrictions and forest service guidelines. So again, you know, just a, a good rule of thumb for this coming weekend and coming up is, you know, do your best to stick to, to gravel and pavement and plan on doing some extra walking when it comes to your to your turkey hunting activities simply because of the conditions out there and a lot of the a lot of the burn bans and the restrictions that have been put in place by like you said the forest service and the counties restrict a lot of that activity anyway and a good place to find that information is where ndresponse.gov thanks jeff a lot of great information thank you mike